现年四十四岁的谢利尔·桑德伯格出生在一个犹太家庭，毕业于哈佛大学商学院，曾任美国总统克林顿时期财政部长、办公厅主任，后投身硅谷，任谷歌全球在线销售和运营部门副总裁，现任 Facebook 首席运营官，被媒体称为 Facebook 的第一夫人，跻身福布斯二零一三全球最具影响力的十大女性榜单。Let's remember, I went to Google, but you were not there. But you arranged a meeting for me there, and it was in 2007, almost final year. So why did you choose to switch up from Google to Facebook? I went to Facebook because I really believe in what Facebook does, which is give people the power to share and connect with their friends. If you look at social media all around the world, including in China. People are really using social media, and it has a great impact on their lives. What is the most fascinating thing you think about for Facebook keeps as its feature? I think one of the most interesting things that happens with Facebook is what happens when you have real identity online. On Facebook, I am myself. I am myself. I connect to my real friends and family. I can share the things that are really happening in my life. You mentioned that Mark has invited you. How? Mark is not afraid to do things that really matter,、mm -hmm. and Mark, I think, pushes all of us around him to be our very best selves.、Mm -hmm. He's a very, very inspiring、uh, person. I mean, just one example: a few years ago, Mark decided he wanted to learn Chinese.、Mm -hmm. I mean, what CEOs decide to learn not just a language, but a very difficult language to learn as an adult? But he studies Chinese, and he had a tutor, and he practiced with some of our employees, and now he can speak. Oh, really? It's pretty incredible. 二零零八年三月 ，Facebook 宣布由桑德伯格出任公司首席运营官时，外界一度不看好这对新搭档，觉得这简直是让三十八岁的桑德伯格去给二十三岁的公司 CEO、IT 神童马克扎克伯格当保姆。但这位曾参与搭建谷歌广告平台的女管家，为 Facebook 找到了新的商业模式及广告模式，令公司广告收入成倍增长，也同时教会了扎克伯格如何将手中。庞大的用户资源转换成现金流。I met him at my friend Dan's Christmas party, and we started talking about how to scale organizations. And then、um, we decided we would get together. We both went on vacation for Christmas, and then we decided we would get back together. And we kept talking about it. And then I wound up coming to Facebook. And actually, I met him once in in Aspen. I think he was like very. Looks very、uh, baby face and a little bit shy. I feel is that true? No, I think I think Mark can be very very personable and very warm.、Um, but he's also he also and he and he would say this. He's you know a computer scientist by trade, yeah, and he yeah, yeah, yeah. really loves to talk about products. But you have no IT background. Yeah. Well, I think Mark and I are very complementary.、Mm -hmm. So the way we work together at Facebook is he runs the product and engineering teams, and he. You know, works on developing our product, and he does it himself. And I run the business side for him, and he helps me on my side as well. But my being there enables him to really focus on the technology development, which is what he wants to do. Do you think that Facebook has already found the successful business model, or still exploring for some new possibilities?、Uh, no, I think we found a very successful business model. We're an advertising-based business. And people all over the world use Facebook to advertise、uh, their products and services. One of the reasons I'm in China is many Chinese companies who are selling products and services to people outside of China are using Facebook to help find those customers. More importantly, I think、um, is the advertising model really works for us globally because we have a lot of people spending a lot of time with us. And a lot of people want to connect. And when you want to connect, you want to connect not just to your friends, but also to the products and services and companies you use. People are talking about the 
big data. What's your idea about of that? I think it's mainly used for people outside of the industry. And I think it's a term that's hard to answer because I'm not sure anyone, I'm not sure it's very obvious what that term means. Yeah, we don't use that term. Do you intend to expand into that area? Yeah? I don't think we need to. I think the advertising model works very, very well for us. Well, people like to see advertisements for things that they like. So just like I want to see stories from my friend's birthday, and you know, Debbie wants to see stories from her friend's birthday. When I think about what ads I like to see, you know, my husband and I, we don't like the same movies. I like romantic comedies. He likes movies where people shoot at each other. So the right advertisement would be, I would see advertisements for movies I like, and he would see advertisements for movies he likes. And understanding that and being able to deliver that creates a much better user experience for me and for him. 涉及 Facebook 的话题，其实不是桑德伯格此行愿意在公众面前过多谈及的。他最希望探讨的是新书《向前一步》以及书中的两性平等话题。作为全球最成功的女性之一，桑德伯格以自身经历为例，在书中剖析了男女不平等现象的根本原因，为职场女性代言。Because you have three parts of your personal experience, what is your lifetime dream? I think my goal is equality. It's equality. It is a world where boys and girls, men and women, have equal opportunity and equal responsibility, both in the workplace and at home. Because when I came into the workforce, as I wrote in my book, I thought it would all work out. I knew that the people at my level were half men, half women. But I looked up and I saw only men ahead of me. But I thought that was based on historical discrimination, and it would change. But I've now been in the workforce for 22 years, and it's not changing. It's really not changing at all, and that's why I wrote Lean In. In our panel discussion, you mentioned that women are always called a bossy, and men, boys, are never called by that. And you mentioned, and your brother said, when you were in the childhood, you always wanted to be. I should say very bossy. Do you feel the way? Is that true? Yeah. I mean, I was called bossy my whole life, and I know most women I know who are leaders were called bossy or the equivalent. You know. Also, I did on the panel we just spoke on what I've done in every audience, which is ask men if you're a man, please raise your hand if anyone's ever told you you're too aggressive at work. You know, a few hands go up. If you're a woman. Please raise your hand if anyone's ever told you you're too aggressive at work, and all the hands go up. And we treat men and women so differently. Do you feel very uncomfortable when people say you are ambitious? Yeah. So the word ambitious, when it's applied to women, has a kind of negative connotation.、Mm -hmm. If you say she's ambitious, there's a negative tone to that. If you say he's ambitious, there's a positive tone to that.、Oh. That I think is what we need to change to get women into equal leadership roles. What kind of ability you think a female leader should achieve? Well, I think the challenges for women of being successful and likable are very real. I wrote about them in my book Lean In. That everywhere in the world, including in China, as men get more successful, they're better liked. As women get more successful, they're less liked. I think one of the things that's good is that. By being aware of these differences and these challenges, we can change them for women, and I think that's what's starting to happen, which is really exciting. How does your husband feel about you, like increasing success? And I think our assumption in a couple that a man should be more successful is one of the things that Lean In is trying to change, so that we can have more opportunity for women. I have a great husband, and he is. Uh, proud of the work I'm doing. He really believes we both have a we have a son and a daughter, and he wants the world to be more equal for them. When I'm not traveling, I go home to have dinner with my children almost every night. But I, but I make it, I make it, I, I make it home to be with them. Obviously, you know, this week I'm in China, so it's too far to go home for dinner. But my husband's home this week, and so we really try to plan our travel so that at least one of us is home with our children. <laughs>